Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming to Deb Chanel's 40s World, where we do reviews. And I'm glad to have the girls' cruise back in circulation. Yes, last week we didn't have it because they were having the MTV Video Awards and all of that jazz, okay? But we're back here coming to the channel once again. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing my videos and liking my videos. And as always, we still need you all to continue to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel and just make it grow, grow, grow. Okay. And again, I like it when you like it as well. Share and you comment in those comment sections. We're going to get right on into it. We're looking at Girls Trip Season 1, Episode 7. They finally, like I said, arrived in Trinidad or Tobago, and they were getting ready for what they call Juve. Okay, it's about 2 a.m. in the morning, and Ron gets on his little microphone and tries to wake all the ladies up and pretty much the staff if they weren't asleep already to tell them to get ready. We're getting ready to be in Trinidad, live in color and in full effect. For the carnival celebration, starting with Juve, okay? Kim's like, not too happy because you're disturbing her sleep. And she's like, mm -mm, I don't like nobody waking me up like that. But they were, I guess, decorating their t-shirts for the Juve uh, experience. And they spent a lot of time uh, in the wee hours of the morning decorating their shirts to wear, okay? So, Rome is going with Charlie, and they're hanging out for a few minutes, talking about, nah, the girls are still asleep, but you and I are up. Why don't we go around in each lady's cabin and wake their behinds up? So the guys go in search of the ladies, of course, trying to figure out what they're doing, why they're still in bed, because they know they needed to be up, because 3 a.m. is when all the fun starts happening. So he knew it was going to take probably 15, 20 minutes to get to the event, so he woke them up at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in the morning. Okay, the women are slowly rising up. They're finally getting up and getting some energy and, you know, having light breakfast uh, put into their systems. Because I'm pretty sure they would really still rather be asleep. But juve happens in the wee hours in the morning. So that's just the way it is. Okay, I think somebody should have took their weary butts to bed at 11 something and decorating uh far in the afternoon hours but they chose to party i guess party 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 like rock, rock stars and they end up um trying to fix their t-shirts for juve at later on in that evening of the wee hours of the morning okay um everybody's in attendance downstairs finally uh trying to get ready to get in the van and go experience the juve uh momentum at uh this little set off place they were having it uh where they were gathering congregating together to do the little dancing in the streets and just playing in mud and pain and all this kind of stuff but pretty view wasn't having it she's like i'm tired i'm still tired we went to bed late we had to decorate our shirts and now you're talking about getting up she wasn't hearing it she wasn't feeling it so everybody was really ready to go. They told Kim to go fire her, get her up, tell her we're going to go or she's just going to stay here and miss out on Juve. Okay, it's 3 o'clock. They finally got everybody up. They ain't really snatched to the gods, how they say. But they're just like in regular t-shirts that they dressed up for the momentum moment of Juve. So they're all aboard the uh, little bus transfer bus they had uh, designated for them to travel when they get on land. Okay, uh, so everybody's off. It's 3 a.m. and they're leaving the boat to go experience the Juve experience, okay, during Carnival. Then we got Maya letting us know she's, you know, she's a quiet girl. And they say, you know what they say about them quiet girls, they get wild and loose, okay? And so she's tooting her own horn that, yes, yeah, she's quiet, but, hey, she had her mama, so she will turn up. Turn it up, 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 turn it up. okay? Then, then they finally, you know, get to Juve. There's a lot of other people out there, you know, painting themselves, dancing in the street, doing the limbo and all that kind of stuff, and drinking and, you know, uh, 
carousing with other people and mingling, interacting, and you know, it's just it's a hot mess. I definitely couldn't be up. I'm like, uh, I ain't going to Juve, but I'll go to the other one that comes open when the sun is up and everybody don't have their breakfast. We don't have brunch or something. But I'm no, so I could have missed all that. But anyway, um, you know, they get into the situation. Everybody's throwing mud. Everybody's throwing pain on each other. And Chili wasn't here for none of that. She like once that pink, that paint hit her shirt that she had decorated so pretty. She like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I ain't, I ain't up for this experience. Uh, uh-uh, uh, I, I, I'm about to step out. And she quickly distanced herself, like over there where nobody really was hanging out. She like, mm, this too nasty. I don't like this pink pipe festival shit going on. No, I, I love my outfit. I love my skin. Put paint on it. That me. I, I'm, I'm finna. Flag on play, flag on play. I'm, I'm finna go if I had to get back on this bus. So she's being like a little Debbie Downer. But I understand you don't be wanting all that paint on you. Ooh, child. Um, I don't be, no, I don't even want to like doing those, uh, what do you call it? Participating in those water gun fights. Mm-mm, don't like it. Don't don't get me wet up because no. And I, I got natural hair, so I ain't worried about my hair. But I'm like, no, that's, not, that's never been me either. I ain't never been in the mud playing type of purse. I mean, I did my shit eyes and this that and her, but I ain't get like mud from head to toe. But um, that's what's a hot mess. So anyway, chili just go to the wayside. And then, you know, everybody was clowning, you know, Ken was going around throwing paint on people, but I'm throwing paint on people. He was just into the whole spirit of the stuff. And the rest of the people, like I said, were doing good with the pain. I was very surprised that Maya had let her hair down and, and, and experience the experience of Juve. But she was cool. So, she, you know, I was like, I ain't had no problem with Maya cutting up. But, you know, she was still doing the most. You know, she was a pretty, pretty, pretty girl. Uh, but she was getting into the whole mud and paint thing. So it was okay. Uh, then, you know, the, the, everybody just, you know, I think it's, they probably did that for about an hour or so, and then after you get sticky and wet, and, you know, you just want to go to bed, you want to get the pain off you, you want to go back to bed, and say, okay, I experienced Juve, it was decent, I, I'm gone, you know, so they all really pretty much got on the bus going back home, well, going back to the boat to rest, because they still had to get up much earlier than they had anticipated, to start with the other um, processions that they had going on for the whole carnival experience. So, um, as they were driving back, Chili would tell them, I don't know if it was Ron she was talking to or Jamie. I think it was Jamie. And she was like, I just saw a man whip out his penis and start peeing on the street. Where they do that at and why? Yeah, she was kind of disturbed. She said, like, I, don't, I don't think I like these kind of people. They ain't sanitized. <laughs> I was like... Chilly, chilly, chilly. Just close your eyes. Try to go to sleep, and I'm sure they'll wake you up when the bus stops. When he, when the bus is back at the boat, where you can undock yourself from the uh the little mini bus they had, so you can go to your quarters, get yourself cleaned out, and throw yourself in the bed. Okay, because she wasn't feeling it, she wasn't having it. It's like she was just totally disturbed. Then we got pretty V, pretty V, and B Simone talking about chilly. And she's being a little lukewarm with the celebrating Juve and all like that. I said, well, you know, uh, Space Mom said, well, you know, she let her hair down. She cool, but I talked to her about it because she got to be a little looser than what she would. I said, I was saying to myself, pretty V and be small. Y'all understand when y'all get a little up in age that you don't want to do all that. You don't want to play with paint, especially, you know, if it's getting in your eyes or whatnot. But I don't know if it necessarily really got in Chilla's eyes. You get like, I don't want it on me, P, period. Okay, because she had already gave us insight to why she didn't really like, you know, getting into stuff like that where it would mess up her hair. Because she didn't want her hair messed up. And she damn sure didn't want no paint in it. <laughs> so, I was like, okay, chill out, girl. So, you know, they were just making small talk. They really wasn't being vicious or vindictive type of talking, gossiping about uh, chilling because, you know, B. Simona already adopted her as her mother. So she ain't gonna let nobody come from Chile. Not in a, uh, uh, a bad way. So then we got B. Simone goes to see Chile and they do a little girl talk, a little chit chat. Chile talks to B. Simone, you know, like a mother figure. I like, oh Lord, Chile done got a daughter. She really has adopted this child because she's really trying to fill her out and try to make her bring down her walls so she can get to the root of the problem of why B. Simone just won't 
talk to her mom, even if it ain't nothing but once a month. You know, reconnect because that is your mom. You know, she tried to do good by you by giving you away, in a sense, to your dad for him to raise uh, because she couldn't do it for some reason. You know, we all have our flaws, and that's one that she's going to have to say about her mother and try to be as, uh, try to be in her life as she sees fits and it won't hurt her emotionally and mentally. But Chili was like, you know, I don't think you should get in, involved with a real relationship right now. But you still have things to be worked on. Da 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 da. And she was saying, you know, when you do talk to your mom, you know, I can be there for you to make th that transition a little easier. And I can also talk to your biological mom, you know, and give her some insight. And I said, okay, look at Chili trying to talk, trying to talk and walk. Try to do that talking, walking, and, and, and good vibe and thing. Okay, I see you, girl. I see you. Maturity is on your side. Maturity is on your side. Then, um, you know, Ron gets pissed because he's trying to get the girls all situated so they can get in their little uh, outfit because he wanted to take them to a stadium where they was going to be a lot, be doing a lot more partying, a lot of more this, that, and third. And, you know, they weren't feeling it. They were like, man, we ain't standing all these parties you talking about. Because y'all talking about getting people messed up from the toe up, from the flow up with all this paint and water and all the mud and all this stuff. So it really wasn't about it really feeling wrong. But most of the women, well, really all of the women had got it together in a short amount of time. But they were just waiting on Pretty V. Pretty V was just, I don't know what she was doing, Lord. She was just, I mean, her costume was a little technical and a little intricate. But I'm like... They, I'm sure they had to have some input of how their costumes were going to be looking and this, that, and third. I'm like, honey, be some more. I mean, pretty be the need number some tights, some little artifact shingles here, this, you know, this way and that way, and move on. Because, I mean, those costumes are very tricky, it seems like. And I don't know. It's just like, oh, it was too much. And Ron was getting pissed. I'm like, nah, Ron. You know you got you full of women and women ain't never on time. It's a few and far between some women out there that be on time all the time every day. You know what I'm saying? But then the majority of us, we just be fooling around with accessories. We don't like the way we look. And we trying to do this and that. And Kim already said she was on her cycle. She didn't feel good. She might need to take a Tylenol. But, you know, it just is what it is. You can never underestimate when, especially if you're not on a charting scale or monitoring your cycle uh, each month to really determine whether or not it will be on some of But you know, if you are on birth control pills, it's a uh, regulates your cycle and you can kind of guess, you know, where you're going to be at, when this is going to happen and just that in the fire. So, <sighs> but gently, Kim is not going by that type of uh, formulating. So it's just like at, at will. Uh, it could be 26 days, 28 days, or it could be 30 days for your period. Come on, it's just, just is what it is, okay? Men wouldn't understand it, only women. Uh, but anyway, uh, they seem like they had a very good time. And I guess the next episode might be their last one for this season. And I'm kind of glad because I'm like, you know, you can only scratch so much out of a TV show sitcom when you've already hit the, the major parts or whatnot. And... You know, that's pretty much it for the video. You know, everybody finally got there. But the um, the carnival, in a sense, was already um, not there anymore, not present. It had already, already had ended because they were just so late uh, with preparing their outfits and getting them on them and then taking the drive, which was like 30 minutes from where they were, and including traffic or whatnot. So, Rome had caught himself pulling some connections together. They bought the band back. Of course, they didn't go inside the stadium where everything was being introduced and, you know, pretty much seen of how they got down uh, the day before the real carnival started. So, he was really pissed. I'm like, oh, my God, what's wrong with Rome? It's just an event. And if Kim ain't all that uh, upset about it, why should you be so he was showing his feeling, honey. He was showing his feeling. He was really in his emotions. But it just is what it was. It was a cute little episode. And, um, you know, I'm I'm, glad, I'm hoping for an end to it, too. Because it ain't too, like I say, it ain't too much you can keep dragging out of storyline. All right. They don't bond it. They don't heal. They're growing together. Hopefully, their friendships among 
them will stay solid and they can take many more trips in the future. Okay, but that's all I have for this video. Hope y'all liked it. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see y'all next girl's trip. Okay, bye-bye.